Hey there, you awesome people. I hope your day has been nothing short of fantastic. Welcome back to a brand new episode of What If Deku Ate the Gomu Gomu no Mi. Izuka used to be crookless, but that all changed when he sunk his teeth into an unusual fruit, granting him the power to stretch his body like rubber. With this newfound ability, he's on a quest to become the ultimate hero. Don't forget to shower some appreciation onto the incredible author responsible for this fanfiction. The link is conveniently waiting for you in the description box down below. If you're totally vibing with this what-if scenario, drop me a comment and let your thoughts be known. And while you're at it, don't miss out on other mind-blowing what-ifs on this channel. Alright, without further ado, let's dive straight into this video. Tashinori was happily humming as he left the examination recording room for the final time. Everyone had been judged on their practical as well as the theoretical, and so scores should be sent out soon. He had just finished his own recording for his successor in his hero mode when he ran into Shota coming out of his own recording. Aizawa-kun. Greeted Tashinori, did you just finish yours? Yay, groaned Shota, Hitashi Shinso did well on the theoretical exam, but on the practical even with the added rescue points, he only got 8 villain points and 20 rescue points, 28 points in total. Even if he did disband an argument, it didn't get him much from the panel of 7 judges. Still, he did do quite well with a quirk like his, not a Tashinori, but being honest, you were in better physical condition and better prepared when you took your examination, even if it wasn't fighting robots like in the past. Young Shinso could have at least bought a staff or baton to fight with. Well, I'll be helping him with that, muttered Shota as he began to leave. He suddenly stopped, his face contorting in disgust at what he was going to do next. All might, I have a favor to ask of you, said Shota as he gritted his teeth as what he was doing, I need you to help me plan a workout schedule to push Shinsho's body as much as possible. Shota knew he could come up with one, but despite that, he knew All Might was the expert at this, considering his own build and experience. Tashinori couldn't resist smalling and transforming into his All Might form, haha. <laughs> Don't worry, I was expecting such a request. Luckily, I've already prepared it for you. With a flourish, he took out a stack of papers from somewhere and presented it to Shota. Behold, my self-designed 45-day workout plan, to go the distance. Get into heroics, American dream. Plan. Shota gingerly took the papers and scanned over it, seeing All Might had completely mapped out the ideal plan, including sleep and diet as well as exercise, and even some time for possible weaponry use. Why weaponry time? Asked Shota curiously. Not to be mean, but young Shinso doesn't seem to have the genetics for a large build, even with my plans. Shinso can easily detain a villain with his quirk, but he doesn't have the means to hold him for long. Most likely a small hit will wake up his captures, meaning they could run away before he has the chance to completely subdue them. But with a weapon, say like your cloth, he could detain enemies long enough to transfer them to the authorities. Makes sense, not at Shoda, as he had already thought about that. He just wanted to see if All Might did too. As long as he follows this schedule, then he should have no problem getting into that reserve spot. Well I must go. Farewell. Waved All Might as he dashed off into the distance. I don't know how I'll cope when he comes teaching in this school, groaned Shoda as we walked away. A few days later. Izuku was on the workout machine, focusing on his lower body when Inko barged into the room. Izuku, it's here. Inko said quickly, holding out a letter with the clear UA symbol on it. Izuku quickly snatched the letter, almost shaking in excitement. Giving him his space, Inko quickly walked back to the kitchen to wait for the news. Izuku looked at the envelope in nervousness before finally ripping open the sticker, flipping it open to see a small circular device inside, quickly placing it on his desk, he leaned back on his chair as the device activated, projecting a video from inside it. This is a projection, declared All Might as his greeting, surprising Izuku. All Might, isn't this a letter from Yue? Asked Izuku to himself. Haha, you may be wondering why I'm here. Stated All Might, well the reason I have been staying here lately is because I will be teaching at Yue. Suddenly, a hand appeared at the lower left of the screen, waving at All Might, and tell him to hurry up. What? Get to the point. Whatever needs to be said can be said later. HMPH, fine, pouted All Might, for your written portion, you aced it. You achieved the highest score, along with one other examinee. An impressive score, but that alone does not guarantee your entrance. As for the practical, you achieved 62 points, until you decided to face that trap villain. You were warned that doing so would result in losing 75% of your current points, making your points stock to 15 points only. With such a value, I'm afraid your entry to UA High's heroic course would be denied. Izuku froze at that statement and looked down in sadness, before his eyes landed on a group photo that had been taken. Momo, Achako, and Itsuka were smiling at the bottom row, while Izuku and Tenyu were on the top row, standing proud. He remembered their words and looked back up to the projection. If it wasn't for the fact that you were all tricked into thinking that, if you recall, President Mick merely said might when he was talking about the punishment. It was done to test your spirit as a hero and to face the odds. There was no penalty in facing the giant foe villain. 
The villain was worth 0 points, nothing more, nothing less. That means your villain points stay at 62 points. Which is easily more than enough to get in. But wait, there's more than that. All Might quickly pointed to another television set while posing, all the while the cameraman was gesturing for All Might to go faster, behold, I am also an entertainer. Let's watch this video. With the click of a button from All Might, the side screen suddenly expanded to fill up a quarter of the projection, with All Might still in there. Within the screen was Ichako, Tenya, and Itsuka, all entering in what seemed to be the teacher's lounge. Wait, what are they doing there? Asked Izuku to nobody in particular. Um, excuse me, said Ichako as soon as they were all standing in front of present Mick. These three came straight to the staff room. Why did they come? Well, let's find out. Um, do you remember the curly-haired boy with freckles? He's kind of tall, just a little shorter than him, gestured Ichako, pointing at Tenya. Indeed, we want to talk about the student who was wearing a green tracksuit, and took on the 0.4 villain at battle site B. Declared Tenya, his right arm moving in a chopping motion. If it helps, his name is Izuku, piped in Itsuka, examine E2234. Yea, him, Deku, continued Ichako adopting a fierce expression on her face before she continued, would it be possible to give him my points? Izuku blinked in shock and awe at what Ichako was doing as she continued, Deku was the strongest and coolest one out there. I think, no, I know that he had the most points within our exam site. He had the highest chance of getting in. Yuri willingly threw most of his points out to save not only me, but a bunch of other ungrateful jerks. He saved my life. It was here then Tenya piped in, take my points as well. Don't take all of hers, take some of mine to supplement it. I had the power to save others, and maybe even prevent him from losing his points if I had acted. But instead, I selfishly only thought about myself, thinking about my points and chances of getting into UA. Yet not only was he able to do something, but he also did so without hesitation. My own cowardice cost him his chance, something I cannot live with myself. As tears pulled in Izuku's eyes while he covered his mouth, All Might paused the video to speak, though while having a powerful quirk, it was your actions that touched others. Your noble and selfless acts have reached deeply into their hearts and spurred them into action. The video continued, and both Ichako and Tenya bowed towards present Mick. Please, beg both of them, there's nobody else more worthy who deserves to accept it into UA than him. Present Mick had to fight the urge to smile before looking to Itsuka, and you. Izuku has always been selfless, sighed Itsuka but smiling, despite the fact it could hurt him physically or mentally, he has always leaped in to save others, even if it meant costing him his chance and breaking his promise to me. I'm sure Izuku would feel guilty if he got in but cost you two your chances. So if it's possible, take some of my points as well. If we split between three of us, I'm sure we can give him enough points while getting in. Seeing Itsuka also bow, present Mick couldn't help but put a huge smile on his face at the sight of all three of them. Indeed, a person with your heart is very rare. To be born with such a golden heart, never forget that. In addition, this exam was not solely based on just villain points. The video continued with present Mick asking them to lift up their heads, sorry, but even if you all ask, we cannot just assign your points to him. The trio was about to argue when present Mick lifted his hand to stop them, allowing him to continue, plus, there's no need for it anyways. Not with his talent and heart to inspire. Trust me, I know he'll definitely pass. How could a hero course reject people who saves others and does the right thing? Said All Might calmly as the side screen shrunk down and he walked close to the camera, letting it slowly pan back to his face, call it lip service. Call it cheesy. Think all you want in this job, risking one's life to put those things into practice is needed. And so, there are rescue points. Given by a panel of the harshest judges, seven in total. It's the other basic ability we look at here. Izuku couldn't help but thank Momo that her analysis was spot on. Izuku Midoriya. Villain points. 62. Rescue points. 70. For a total of 132 points. Don't think the judges didn't notice your actions before the giant foe villain. They were quite impressed with how you would aid others, preventing them from being in danger. The giant villain just solidified their judgment about you. For the first time since UA has opened, you are the only applicant that has managed to achieve full rescue points. Not only that, but you shattered the previous highest records by a whopping 32 points, which was mine by the way. Izuku could scarcely stop the tears streaming down his cheeks, as the camera panned back to All Might's back, as he slowly turned around to the camera in an epic manner. He raised his hand towards the camera, as if gesturing Izuku to come forth, come, young Midoriya. This is just the beginning of your journey. You certainly showed everyone just what you're made of, and you went plus ultra. This is your hero academia. Izuku couldn't help but only nod his head as he tried to wipe off his tears. Once he finally did so, he took the recorded projection to the kitchen, so he could share the news with his mother, Inko. To the majority of the applicants, they received a projection letter of Nezu introducing himself before showing their scores for the theoretical and practical below him before a final statement, whether or not they were accepted into whatever course they were applying for or even being allowed into the general studies course. 
It was roughly the same recording that was always used for every applicant. Only a few students received different recording if they had done something to be recognized. For instance, both Achako, Tenya, and Itsuka received different recordings from the vast majority in recognition for their willingness to sacrifice their points for Izuku. Another student to receive a different recording was Hitashi Shinso. Shinso was staring at the envelope addressed to him from Yue. After several prodding from his mother, he finally gained the courage to open the letter in the privacy of his room. The recorded projection showed up to reveal not Nezu or All Might, but rather Aizawa Shoda. Hey. Bet you're curious about your results, stated Shoda in a rather lax manner, and I bet you're wondering, who the hell is this guy? Shinso couldn't help but nod at that question. Well I'm one of the teachers at UA High, continued Shoda, usually the principal, Nezu, does this crap, but I decided to do yours. Your theoretical exam was good. In your practical, you earned 8 villain points, which should be obvious that that isn't enough to even be considered. Shinso could only grit his teeth as he heard this. It just wasn't fair, his quirk wasn't suitable for this type of exam, nor was it flashy enough. His quirk brainwash made people automatically assume he would become a villain. But then I saw you act after the exam, continued Shoda, causing him to perk up, nice job defusing that potential fight. I was going to intervene, but you stopped it first without even throwing a punch. Not many people can do so, since a lot of people are so gung-ho about violence. During the exam and after, there were also rescue points to consider. Unfortunately, even with your act, you only earned 20 rescue points from the judges, giving you a total of 28 points. Not enough to be considered. Shinso's head dropped back down in depression. However, I am quite curious about your quirk, brainwash, continued Shoda. Such a potentially useful quirk wouldn't have revealed itself in UA's practical exam, especially since we placed the rule that you can't interfere with other students. It's only because I saw you use it to stop the fight did I investigate you a little closer. So thus, using my power and influence as a teacher, you're in a rather curious spot. Shinso slowly looked up back at the projection in disbelief, his eyes showing a glimmer of hope and tears. Nezu has agreed to give you a reserve ranking spot in the Heroics course, continued Shoda with a yawn. You'll be placed in the general studies class, but when it comes to specific heroic course events, you'll be going with them. However, there is a condition to this spot. Within the next two months, you'll have to undergo hellish physical training. As of right now, you can't compare to those who have been training with their quirks and or physical aptitude. His ability have been shown to be able to combat the robots. There was even a girl whose quirk is just invisibility, and yet she showed enough physical strength and cunning to gain entry to the course, meaning she's physically stronger than you. But that, Aizawa slowly pushed his bangs out of his eyes, before giving a maniacal smile to the camera, the maniacal gleam also seen in his eyes. If you want to prove yourself, then come to Mistufa Local Park. You should be getting this message on March 5th, so get over here on the 6 at 7 in the morning sharp. I know you live somewhere close there, and I'm going to train your ass. If you don't show up, I'm going to assume you don't want this chance. This is your chance to show your plus ultra. Shinso couldn't help but try to stop his tears with his eyes as he nodded in agreement, already making plans to do so. Alright, my letter came. Said the ungrateful skinhead whom Izuku had saved during the entrance exam. He quickly opened it to have the projection show a recorded message from Nezu, showing the initial same recording as everyone. However, this changed as a new recording overlaid the pre-recorded one, as Nezu wanted to make a statement. As you can tell, despite your rather average score in the theoretical, you achieved 38 villain points. A rather decent score. Not too shabby, if I say so myself, bragged the skinhead, waiting for Nezu to tell him he was in. However, villain points were not the only thing we were looking for. We were also careful to pay attention to rescue points. Now then, let me show you an interesting video, said Nezu as he drank his tea. The video revealed him distracting other examinee with petty ways, such as pointing to absolutely nothing while gasping, causing them to look away, while he destroyed the villain bots. Another scene showed him taking a villain bot that somebody was clearly already fighting and about to destroy it. He had been hiding behind some wreckage, waiting for that chance. However, as these fell into the more grey area of hindering other examinees, he wasn't immediately disqualified. Another revealed him in a fetal position. And lastly, there was a recording of him dissing Izuku's rescue. And so, proclaimed Nezu as the video was finished, our panel of judges have agreed to a unanimous decision. Or Kabaka. 38 villain points and minus 58 rescue points. Yes, there have been negative points given before, but nothing like yours. That gives you a total of minus 20 points. For the first time in UA's history, you are the only one examinee to receive a negative score in your total. Congratulations on such an achievement, and if it wasn't obvious, your application has been rejected completely. You would even be accepted to any of our other courses here. We will not send a copy of this video to other schools offering heroic courses, as we do not want to hinder your chances with them, as much as I would love to do so. Hopefully, this will teach you humility. But bye and try again at another school. The skinhead could only stare as the video ended before curling up into a ball and crying.
Mom, the mouse was mean to me. Later that night at 8, Tashinori Yagi was standing at Takuba Beach, admiring the view of the stars, as the ocean waves gently lapped the shores, providing a soothing sound for him. His mind wandered back to the staff meeting as they were discussing the scores of the top 10. Minor flashback. Damn, first place this year rocked. Said one staff member, 62 points and a whopping full 70 rescue points. To which nobody has actually ever gotten full points on that. In front of them all were the top 10 scores listed in front of them. First, Izuku Midoriya. 62 villain, 70 rescue. Second, Tenya Ida. 52 villain, 30 rescue. Third, Katsuki Bakugo. 77 villain, 0 rescue. Fourth, Itsuka Kendo. 25 villain, 50 rescue. Fifth, Ijiro Kirishima. 39 villain, 35 rescue. Sixth, Achako Uraka. 28 villain, 45 rescue. Seventh, Ibar Shizaki. 36 villain, 32 rescue. Eighth, Tetsu Tetsu Tsutsu. 49 villain, 10 rescue. Ninth, Fumikage Tokoyami. 47 villain, 10 rescue. Tenth, Yusetsu Waze. 50 villain, 6 rescue. That third place guy, Katsuki Bakugo, is a tough one. He would have been second for sure if not for those last minute addition of rescue points to Tanya Ida. 77 points all from villains only. Even so, when the faux villain came out, he just went even faster destroying all the other robots while everyone was running, piped another one. Tashinori just sat in the back, resisting the temptation to transform and brag about his successor, and smirking. Flashback ends. Mr. Yagi. Greeted Izuku as he arrived at the beach, knowing to keep his identity a secret. Young Midoriya. Greeted Tashinori, I see you got my text message. Congress on passing. Just so you know, I had no influence in the judgment process. Didn't want to seem like I was playing favors, and it seemed like you would be the type to think that would be cheating. Thanks for the concern, about Izuku, so you're going to be teaching at UA. Makes sense why you were at this prefecture for so long when your agency is at Rapongi in Minato. I, I was originally offered a job there while searching for a successor, not a Tashinori, though you made that job so much easier for me. So instead, I shall be guiding the latest batch of heroes, while being able to help you better control one for all. Thank you very much. Thought Izuku once more. Though he could use 100% of it right now, he couldn't control it well. Sure he could use it multiple times, but each time he used it, he would stagger, as if overextending a punch. Such a huge opening could prove fatal, as all might have proven when he sparred with him before. Layering one for all all around his body didn't help either for using 100%, as he still staggered. 60% was okay to use only for mobility purposes. For fighting purposes, he was best at using 50% for now. Though, that reminds me, piped up Izuku, my mom wants me to invite you for dinner. Says she wants to thank you for helping train me. Well if it's an honest request, start a Tashinori before transforming into All Might, then I have no reason to refuse such a request from the lady. Holy crap, it's All Might. Said a guy with his girlfriend. No way, how long was he here? Asked the girl. There, run young Midoriya. Shouted All Might as he dashed away, Carolina Dash. Two days later, Izuku had gotten on the computer, putting on the headset before creating a video chat room while waiting. Seconds later, three windows appeared on his screen. Yoho! Waved Itsuka from her side. Greetings, said Tenyu with his right arm in a chopping motion. We're here. Greeted Momo and Ichako together at one screen. Since Ichako didn't have a computer at her own apartment yet, she was with Momo, who lived closer to her. Ichako had to get used to the fact that Momo lived at a freaking mansion, or something similar to it. It took her a good minute to get used to this fact before she could relax. What also helped was that the video camera Momo had connected to a large television, so they didn't have to squish together, along with a microphone that easily picked up their voices. So, you all pass. Asked Izuku with a relaxed tone as he leaned back on his chair. Yep. Said all of them, you too, right? Yay, grinned Izuku before giving a rather evil smirk. You guys all knew about the rescue points from present Mick, didn't you? Ahaha, <laughs> what gave you that idea? Whistled a Chako and the others while Momo looked at them curiously. Izuku merely took a video clip that he had managed to take from the projection, and put it up for them to see. Yue. Blushed Itsuka as she covered her face with her hands, making them bigger so they could cover her face. Tenya coughed to the side while bringing his glasses up. A Chako had it the worst as she began to stammer and float away from the couch she was sitting on. She quickly released it as she felt herself getting sick, though her face was still crimson. I'm surprised they showed you that video to you, noted Momo, isn't that kind of private. Ahaha, <laughs> sweat dropped Izuku nervously, air who was on your projection. Principal Nezu, stated all of them. The cocoon, who was on your projection? Asked Ichako, switching the subject back. Well, hesitated Izuku, don't tell anyone, but it was All Might. All Might? Shouted all of them, the speech bubble going right through Izuku's ears and almost deafening him. 
How come you got All Might for yours? Shouted Itsuka. Well, it might be because I place first in the whole thing. Wow, you place first? Asked Hachako. How many points? I got 28 villain points, 45 rescue. They gave me a lot of rescue for some reason. Probably because you offered your points for Izuku, chirped in Itsuka. I got 25 villain and 50 rescue. I helped a lot of people during my exam, and I think they gave me a bit of extra. 52 villain, 30 rescue, volunteer tenure. I do not feel like I deserve those rescue points, though. Echeko was the first to give up her points without hesitation, and though I offered, I cannot forgive myself for hesitating back in the exam. It's alright, soothed Momo, most people wouldn't think to fight, but rather flee. It's why we're training to be heroes. What did you get, Izuku? 62 villain points and 70 rescue points, answered Izuku. He blinked as they all gawked at him. That's, 132 points, gasped Momo. Izuku, you completely shattered the previous highest record by 32 points. Not even All Might got that high of a score. Wow go Izuku, teased Itsuka with a melodious laugh. Indeed, you certainly deserve it, praised Tenya. They planned to meet up to celebrate their acceptance letters once more. Tenya had found a restaurant for them to celebrate, and insisted on paying for them all. Oh, Itsuka-chan, did you want to meet up with Grandmaster Rikai again? Asked Izuku, I'm sure she'd be happy to see you again. That'd be nice, nodded Itsuka, we can both go together. Ooh, I want to come, cheered Ichako. Indeed, a place where you learn how to fight and utilize your quirk would be most intriguing, said Tenya. It would be nice to see more of the city, smiled Momo. Great, then we can meet up this Friday. My school ends on Thursday. Cheered Izuku, everyone good with this. Yay. Cheered all of them. Though inside Itsuka, she made a grumpy noise as she wanted to be with only Izuku when they went to meet Rikai. It would almost be like a date. But she couldn't refuse such an honest request from the other three. Friday arrived, and as Izuku was about to run out to meet up with the others before heading to the dojo, he met with someone he never thought he'd see waiting in front of his door. Bakugo. Blinked Izuku, questioning his eyesight right now. Fight me, right now Deku, demanded Kazuki. Here? Asked Izuku with a raised eyebrow, in front of my house. Hell no. Shouted Katsuki, I meant get your ass out and follow me to the park. We can have our show down there. Izuku gave a sigh of annoyance as he closed the door behind him. Bakugo, I'm planning to meet up with friends. Can we do this afterwards? Fuck no, demanded Katsuki as he turned around. We're throwing down right here, right now. You fucked up my grand plans to be the first and only student from Aldera Junior High. So we're going to decide who's the best now. Katsuki turned back just to see Izuku jumping off the balcony of the building five stories up. Quickly leaning over the edge, he saw Izuku land perfectly safe on the ground before dashing away. Head back here Deku. Shouted Katsuki as he also jumped off the balcony, using his explosions to control his descent towards the ground, while chasing after Izuku. Momo, Akako, Itsuka, and Tenyu were waiting at the base of the stairs leading to the temple, wondering where Izuku was. Hey I see him, said Momo, using some binoculars she created, and he's, being chased by another person. Is he being harassed? Gasped Tenya, we must go to his aid. Wait, Yoyorozu san, is the person chasing him have blonde spiky hair, an angry face, and constantly yelling die? Asked Itsuka. Die? Yes, Kendo san, that's exactly what he's saying, swear dropped Momo. That'll be Katsuki Bakugo, growled Itsuka, what does he want now? Is there a history between them? Asked Ichako. Bakugo was, still is Izuku's mean bully, scoffed Itsuka, you think the butt whooping he got when he tried to come into the dojo and saving his life, would make him tone it down, but new. Izuku claims he has, but he sometimes believes in the best of people a little too much. Then in a smaller but softer tone, she added, but that's what makes him special. Before anyone could call her out on that, Izuku had arrived. Sorry, but he insists on coming, sighed Izuku as he came to a stop. Deku. Stop running away from me, you faggot. Roared Katsuki as he also came to a stop. Persistent much. Chirped in Rikai, surprising all of them. Whoa, when you get here, and how long were you here? Shoot to Chako. About the time you guys heard this boy yelling die, shrugged Rikai, I could hear him from all the way up from my dojo, so I decided to come down to see what was going on. He was screaming it for a good while. Wait, we didn't even hear that until just now, questioned Tenya. That's because of her quirk, Sonar, whispered Itsuka quickly, she can hear things a lot better than, well almost anyone. You? Old hag. Shouted Katsuki as soon he saw Rikai. That's not polite. Lecture Tenya, only for Rikai to raise her king. Hey, I let people call me that, chuckled Rikai, but boy, do you want me to kick your ass again? You remember what happened last time. Katsuki surprisingly didn't reply, just mumbling under his breath. Now that he's shut up, I know I heard Itsuka's voice around here, said Rikai, turning towards her. Grandmaster Rikai, it's good to see you again in good health, bowed Itsuka. Haha, <laughs> so it is you, chuckled Rikai, come to see me again, or is it Izuka you wanted to see more? Both, blushed Itsuka, her whole face turning red. 
Luckily or unluckily for her, Izuku didn't hear that as he was busy with Katsuki prodding him, challenging him once more. Alright, all you can come up to my dojo, said Rikai as she turned back towards the stairs. Kendo-san, not to be rude, but is she, Momo trailed off, not wanting to be rude. One, just call me Itsuka, smiled Itsuka, and two, she's blind. It's okay, she doesn't mind. Wow. Said Achako, she's like a kick-ass blind martial arts master in those movies. Haha, <laughs> I like her. Shouted Rikai from the stairs, causing Achako to blush. She didn't think she could be that easily heard. They made their way into the dojo, where Rikai promptly tossed two shirts and wushu pants to Izuku and Katsuki. You two go change. Izuku, take him to battle site 2 when you're both done changing. But, stuttered Izuku as Katsuki gave a malicious grin. Let's fight him, Yon Rikai, he's obviously not going to let this up. Do you really want him to keep chasing you all summer long? He'll give everyone the impression that you two are lovers. As the girl's faces turned crimson in both anger at Izuku being taken while also having conflicting yaoi moment thoughts, Izuku and Katsuki turned pale. I really don't think that would be the case, coughed Tenya, trying his best to restore order. Fuck you, this is your fault. Snarled Katsuki. Me? You're the one who keeps chasing me when I say no. Snapped back Izuku. The two glared at each other for a moment before huffing away towards the changing room. Master, why are you allowing this? Asked Itsuka gently. Because it's the best way to confront this, said Rikai, motioning them all to follow her. I can tell the Katsuki boy really just wants to be the best. Izuku has admired him when he was young, but things changed. Izuku doesn't hate him, per se, just dislikes a bit. At the same time, he respects him still. What he truly wants is respect back. This fight may be enough to push them to become friends and rivals, to help push each other to become better heroes. Wait, that violent student wants to be a hero. Said Tenya in surprise. With a personality like that, it's hard to see, added Momo, especially if what Itsuka says is true, and that he's a bully. It's like they were fated to become rivals. Cheered Ichako. I'd rather just smack him down, muttered Itsuka, but bowing towards Rikai's words. Here we are, stated Rikai as they arrived to a flat dirt stage. When did you get this? Shouted Itsuka in surprise, didn't this used to have trees? Though a few students were experimenting with their quirks, and one of them caught the trees on fire, shrugged Rikai, trees burn well. So before you know it, the rest caught on fire. As punishment, they all had to remove the tree trunks and set up this stage. I get a new sparring arena out of free labor. You're sadistic. Thought Momo, Ichako, and Tenya. Katsuki was staring at Izuku as they stood across from each other on the sparring arena. Alright, I'm allowing quirks for this match, said Rikai from her seat while sipping tea, no lethal blows. If I say stop, you all stop or I'll kick your ass. If you get kicked outside the boundary lines and touch the ground, you lose. Manage to get back in while over the line and not touching the ground, you're fine. No offense, but how can you tell if they are over the line with your visual impairment? Asked Tenya. I can hear them just fine, replied Rikai. I can hear you moving your arms every time you talk. I can even tell that girl is currently scratching her left arm. Momo froze in shock and awe as Rikai had pointed that out without even turning away from Tenya. She was indeed scratching her left arm, but the fact she could hear that was amazing. Alright, you two boys ready? Asked Rikai. Brin. Started Katsuki, but Rikai didn't care. Start. Jido. Trilled off Katsuki before having to dodge a punch from Izuku, asshole. Die. Katsuki started off with the right hook, just to see Izuku suddenly intercept that hook and Judo toss him into the floor. Katsuki spat out some spit before quickly rolling away just in time as Izuku tried to stomp on his face. Katsuki quickly got back up on his feet with his quirk and flew towards Izuku once more. He raised his right hand once more, but it was a feint as he lashed out with a left kick. Izuku, however, read through that and blocked it with his right hand. Before Katsuki could try to use his explosions, Izuku's arm extended, wrapping around Katsuki's leg. With a fierce yell, Izuku threw Katsuki into the ground, causing him to roll towards the line. He'll be out of bounds. Commented Tenya, but Katsuki managed to push himself up into the air despite tumbling, quickly repositioning himself before using one of his biggest blasts, to not only get back in, but to shoulder charge right into Izuku, who didn't react in time. Though he received no damage from the bash, but Katsuki wasn't done yet. Die. Shouted Katsuki as he quickly put his hands up and blasted Izuku in the chest with another explosion. Oh no, he'll be ring out. Commented Achako in worry as Izuku rolled towards the lines. Izuku managed to right himself up, stretching both arms back before using it to attack the ground, causing the earth to break. The attack held the momentum, allowing him to stay in. Damn it, growled Katsuki as he shook his hands to shake off the slight numbness, can't believe I got red like that. In every fight you get, breathed out Izuku, you've almost always started off with the right hook. I've seen it enough to know that. You know I've always written in my hero analysis notebook. Some of my notes included you. I know you're strong, and your desire to be a hero. Shut up. You're just a damn worthless pebble on my path. 
shouted Katsuki as he charged forward, using his explosions to boost himself forward. Izuku waited and tried to jab Katsuki, but Katsuki fired off an explosion to change trajectory, going above Izuku while using the explosion as a smokescreen. Quickly adjusting himself in midair, he put one hand towards Izuku and the other to the opposite direction, activating his cork on both hands. Suddenly, Izuku disappeared from his view before his explosions could land. What? Thought Katsuki as he landed on his feet, quickly looking around. His instinct suddenly blared and raised his left arm just in time to block an arm swing from Izuku. Good instincts, noted Momo, I thought it was just all brute force, but that plan of his was fairly intricate. Not to mention even when he missed and lost sight of Izuku suddenly, he reacted fairly quickly. You think you had me? Roar Katsuki as he raised his right hand, don't get to. He didn't get the chance to finish as Izuku's right arm swing hit him in the back of the head. Katsuki had blocked it just past the elbow joint, allowing Izuku to bend his elbow and wrist in to hit him in the head. Katsuki gritted his teeth and tried to land an explosive palm strike, but Izuku ducked under that before elbowing Katsuki to the face. Katsuki caught it, but was unprepared for Izuku's second attack. Izuku unbent his elbow, extending his arm out and smacked him in the face once more. Katsuki stumbled back and looked up to see Izuku jumping into the air, as if to land a spinning round kick. Katsuki immediately put arms up to guard. However, it was a feint as Izuku never attacked with his right leg, instead landing first in front of him, before snapping his left leg out for a back kick into Katsuki's stomach. Fuck. Shouted Katsuki as he landed back towards the middle, quickly getting ready once more, just to see Izuku at the edge of his vision. He quickly turned to track him, but found it difficult to track him down. Wait, isn't that your move? Shouted Itsuka in surprise at what Izuku was doing, goes perplexing steps. Wow, he's moving so fast. Praise Ichako. No, it's not simply speed, observed Momo. Right, if it was just speed, I'd be faster, not a tenure, but rather, it's how violent he's making those cuts. I can make sharp turns if needed, but I can't do it so often like he's doing. But wouldn't making so hurt your ankles? Asked Chako as she gently experimented and tried to mimic what Izuku was doing, just to almost twist her ankle. If you train your ankle and ligaments, you can do it for a few minutes, commented Rikai as she sipped her tea, even I can't do it for so long. But Izuku here is a lucky one, due to his quirk. Ah. Itsuka and Momo both put their right hand on top of their left palm, as if understanding it now, that's right. Izuku is made out of rubber completely. Rubber? Asked Tenya, hoping they would clarify a bit more. Izuku's whole body can stretch easily, explained Itsuka, his skin, bone, everything has some sort of rubber-like property. That means what would usually cause extreme stress to a muscle, Izuku can do it without any trouble. Finished Momo. Shitty Deku's made out of rubber. Growl Katsuki as he took a punch to the shoulder, trying to dodge as best he could while analyzing the situation. Izuku kept on moving, making it hard to track him. What was worse was Izuku could fire off punches and kicks while still being out of his own range in his blind spot. Quickly making a decision, Katsuki quickly ran towards a corner of the arena, turned around and planted his feet down. Isn't he just trapping himself like that? Asked Ichako curiously. Rat's got good fighting instincts, refuted Rikai, by putting himself there, he's made it his back, and sides are protected. The only way to hit him now is from the front. Shit, it's still hard to get a grasp of his location thought Katsuki as Izuku moved closer to him, still using those steps to make sharp cuts, then I'll just get them all. Katsuki fired off a barrage of explosions from his hands, covering half the stage, as well as engulfing Izuku in it. Izuku! Shouted Momo and Itsuka in worry. You know, I don't understand why Izuku doesn't use the power he showed back at the entrance exam, piped up Tenya, you know, the one where he one-shot the 0.4 villain. Wait one shot Itsuka whirled around, you guys never mentioned that. I though he just farted until he could beat it. Suddenly, Izuku dashed out of the smoke, his shirt burnt off as well as parts of his pants. His whole body was slightly glowing, with arcs of green lightning wrapped around him. Izuku ran right up towards a surprise Katsuki, his right arm that he had left extending suddenly retracted, as Izuku almost landed an upper to the stomach. Katsuki was able to put both hands down to block the attack, and though the impact sent him flying up and with stinging hands, Katsuki grinned as he let off a huge explosion upon Izuku's fist impacting his hand. Got you? Grinned Katsuki as smoke covered the area, his body still going up from the impact and force of both attacks. He separated his hands and frowned. He could barely feel his hands now, and swore that some of the bones might have been fractured. He was ending this now. He spread out his hands, ready to accelerate down and end this with a new move he had just concocted just now. He was so focused on getting ready to attack that he failed to see an extended leg slam him from the side. Katsuki barely had time to reorient himself before painfully landing on his left side, using his hands to protect his head. I'll kill you. Shouted Katsuki as he quickly stood up, noticing that his left arm could no longer move due to dislocation. Still, he wasn't going to give up. And that's it. 
announced Rikai, as Zuku wins due to ring out. Katsuki froze as he looked down to see he was indeed out of the ring. He began to shake as his mind began to register that he had indeed lost the battle. Izuku shouted Achako, Momo, and Itsuka in worry. I'm Kofuke, okay, coughed Izuku as the smoke cleared. The girls suddenly stilled themselves, their faces turning crimson. Blood started to slowly leak out of their noses. Midoriya-san, you're naked, shouted Tenyu with worry. Indeed, Katsuki's last attack had burned through most of his clothes. Rikai's clothes that she had given them were just plain regular clothes, not specially tailored to be resistant like skulls that offered heroic courses. In fact, the only clothes Izuku still had was his All Might boxers that had holes on it, including the middle part. Tenya had quickly taken his coat that he was wearing and wrapped it around Izuku's waist. That soon had the girls mentally thanking and cursing Tenya for his actions, as they had not been able to get a good look there due to the smoke still covering it. Mikai laughed loudly as she could hear the girl's pulse quickening before dismissing Izuku to the locker, where he had a spare set of clothes he had always kept in there, including underwear. While Izuku quickly dashed away in embarrassment, Rikai walked over to the still-frozen Katsuki, and with a swift whack, slammed her stick right at the dislocated shoulder. Ah, fuck you, you old hag, cried Katsuki as he rolled on the ground from the impact. Ah shut up, replied Rikai as she gently bumped Katsuki on the head, I've put your shoulder back, didn't I? Katsuki blinked before noticing that what she said was true. You learned quite a bit today, didn't you? Continued Rikai, did you think with a quirk, you were the strongest? That everybody was just a pebble in your path? Rikai hobbled around Katsuki for a bit, I've heard from a few places that you went to some gyms and dojos, taking a few lessons here and there, ever since the sludge villain incident. But did none of them show you just how big the world is? Seeing no response, Rikai sighed, no surprise there. Must have wanted you to become their poster boy. Sad truth is that you are strong, your battle instincts are top notch, and you have one of the best quirks out there. However, you shallow. You've allowed all those praises weaken you. Your judgment's been skewed. What you thought was a pebble is really a mountain. But even great people can trip on pebbles if they're not careful. But, tried Katsuki, but Rikai bulldozed through. You've let yourself become conceited. Tell me, before the sludge villain incident, did you ever push yourself, train harder that your whole muscles complained, and yet still charge through? Izuku's been doing that since he came to my dojo, and even more after that incident. Katsuki had no response to that question. Sure he made sure he was fit, but nothing like what he saw from Izuku's body. It was only the past 10 months that he really did push himself further. You've never been pushed down before, stated Rikai, well now's your chance. You've been pushed down. Are you going to give up? Fuck no. Shouted Katsuki, quickly standing up, I won't give up being a hero. I might have lost today, but I won't fucking lose again. Even if I do, I'll keep on going. Katsuki tried to wipe his tears away to look tough, but some still remained as he shouted, I'm going to beat Deku, you, I'll beat all of you, and show you that I'll be the number one hero. Mikai merely smiled and tapped Katsuki on the head, see that you do. That stubbornness of yours will help you on your path. It would also do you well to have a rival to push you. If Izuku is no longer a pebble, perhaps he can be a whetstone to sharpen yourself. Katsuki thought about it and grinned, putting Izuku as a whetstone and no longer a pebble. But he was confused why his own teacher would say such a thing. If you're wondering about why I said that, said Rikai, it's because I know you'll also sharpen Izuku up. The more you two push each other, the stronger you'll both be. It's a win-win situation. Now go take a shower and change out of your clothes. Are you alright? Asked Momo worriedly, already using her court to produce some cold compress, anti-burn cream, and bandage wraps. Itsuka and Ichako were busy applying the cream and wraps on Izuku's body, causing a bit of jealousy within Momo. They were touching him, hand to skin, moving all over those incredible muscles, almost sensu, Momo stopped her train of thought, lest she give herself a nosebleed. Itsuka and Ichako were slightly blushing as they applied the medicine. Itsuka hadn't seen Izuku for a long time, with only the video camera to see him. When she had first hugged him back at the entrance exam, she noticed how hard some of those muscles felt when she touched them. Now that she could take a closer look, she could tell just how buff Izuku had gotten. Her hands lingered a little longer than they should have while applying the burn cream. At the same time, she was a bit jealous that Momo could easily create items to help Izuku. Echeko was too busy admiring Izuku's body, and Tenya's concern was if there was any lingering or crippling damage. I'm fine, waved off Izuku as Tenya fussed over him once more, but Kugo knows how to control himself, even if he seems like he's a loose cannon. He wants to be a hero. With that attitude, scoffed Tenya, he'll have a hard chance. Actually, he's already been accepted to UA Heroics, chuckled Izuku, he and I got called up by the principal of our school to congratulate us both. What? Shouted Tenya, Achako, and Momo, while Izuku merely held her nose up with her hands, staving off the incoming headache of the thought of being at the same school with Katsuki. After a bit more of talking and Izuku mainly trying to pacify his friends that Katsuki wasn't that dangerous, they were prepared to head off towards the sushi place Tenya had recommended. 
Deku. They stopped and turned around to Katsuki, who had also come down the stairs. You won this time, but next time, I'll win. Shouted Katsuki, I'll kick all your asses. With that note, he stomped away. Well, that was that, chuckled Izuku, now let's go eat. I'm starving after that battle. Yay. Cheered the others. So your school has ended. Asked Momo as Tenya ordered some more sushi. They were at a nice restaurant where they could order off from a screen right next to them, among a revolving conveyor belt. Tenya had paid for the all-you-can-eat special for all of them, insisting that he do so since Momo did last time. Yay, Bakugo and I tied up first in our school, replied Izuku. I find it very hard to believe that he is that smart, considering his personality, stated Tenya as he had finished ordering a sushi boat with real wasabi, not those fake ones that were made out of horseradish and other ingredients, along with food coloring. He is blunt, but he knows how to study, chuckled Izuku, despite his brash attitude, he always goes to the library during lunch or self-study periods. He studies at home after dinner for an hour despite already finished his homework in the afternoon. And how would you know this? Asked Itsuka. Easy. His mom and my mom are best friends, shrugged Izuku, she sometimes tells me these things. Just because he and I don't get along very well doesn't mean our parents don't. Speaking of mothers. Inko was humming a song as she sweeped the floor with a dust sweeper when the doorbell rang. Coming. Sang Inko as she opened the door to reveal Mitsuki Bakugo. Inko. I haven't seen you for a while. Smiled Mitsuki as she entered the hall, you haven't gone to the gym with me. Did you start slacking off? Oh, sorry, apologized Inko, it's just recently we got exclusive home all in one gym set machine. I've been using that instead of heading to the gym for a bit. But I do need to work on some cardio today, so we can go if you want. Hmm, a home gym set. Smiled Mitsuki, let me see. She quickly barged into the room where they had kept the gym set and stared for a good two minutes. Um Mitsuki? Asked Inko, seeing her friend stand there without a word. Inko, do you know the average cost of a decent home gym machine like this? Asked Mitsuki. Somewhat expensive, I imagine, stated Inko, Izuku got it from Tashi-chan for helping him out with a few things, as well as reparation for an incident. So roughly, 200,000 yen. Yes, but that's not your average one, replied Mitsuki as she carefully inspected the machine, this is one of the best and latest brand, approved by All Might himself. Something like this is going to cost around 800,000 yen. And holy shit, I just noticed it, but it's specially made to go beyond the normal sets. And it feels like these strings are made out of stronger stuff than normally use. Same with the materials and these metal bars holding it all up. I'd say this customization together would cost, about 1 fucking million yen. Oh my, Gastinko, I never thought Tashi-chan would spend that much for us. Ooh, did I hear that right? Smirked Mitsuki, as if she gave a predatory grin, did I hear a man's name in that? You said his name twice. And with a chan on the end. It's nothing, blushed Inko. Bullshit, that's something, shot back Mitsuki, tell me the details, girl. And so Inko explained how she met Tashinori Yagi, who helped train Izuku. How he would sometimes stay over and eat with them when she invited him. How they would have tea together sometime without Izuku knowing. And how she gave a pack to his cheek as thanks, causing him to walk away with a dreamy smile. Oh someone's got the hots for you. Said Mitsuki bluntly. It was very easy to tell where Katsuki had picked up his bluntness and tendency to curse from. I don't know, mumbled Inko, I thought, I don't know what to think. Tashi-chan is a nice man, though he does look like he could use some meat on his bones. He has this weird giant smile that looks distorted, but at the same time, you can feel a sense of protection and calmness from it. And even though he looks so thin, I once tripped, and he easily caught me with his arms. They felt so, safe and warm, as well as muscular, which was confusing to say the least. Sounds like you like him too, grinned Mitsuki. Maybe, pondered Inko, but I have Izuku to care for. That shouldn't stop you from finding someone, said Mitsuki softly. I know your time with Hisashi was bittersweet, but that's in the past. If this guy makes you happy, then go for it. I'm sure Izuku will understand. Then Mitsuki's smile became predatorial once more. Plus, if this Tashinori dude doesn't show some respect, then you can always use that technique I taught you. The woman's secret technique, Bullbuster. Both women fell into a pile of laughter before chatting about some gossip. Tashinori Yagi had been drinking some tea when he felt a chill up his spine. He did not know the cause, nor did he feel like he wanted to know. Instead, he decided to focus a bit more on some paperwork to finalize his classes, taking a quick look on his phone. On the background was himself in his real skinny form, Izuku, and Inko. His heart took a quick beat at the sight of it, before he spat out blood once more. He really needed to focus. On a plus side, now that he had given his cork away, he was considering the possibility of a stomach transplant, as well as a lung transplant. Or, if possible, regrowing them. He had heard possibilities of such things in the medical field, though he would have to ask recovery girl for more details. He didn't want to do so earlier was because he did not want the chance of one for all to be discovered. Izuku and the others consumed the sushi boat and kept ordering some more. 
The head chef, a man with eight hands, was doing his best to keep up with all the orders. The Chaco, unused to being able to order so much, soon got into it, ordering her favorite fish sushi. Izuka made himself useful and refilled their water cups, merely needing to stretch his arms across to the convenient water dispenser across from him. Momo and Tenya helped suggest different types of sushi to try out, having been to restaurants like these before. Itsuka took it up to do all the ordering for them. Soon, they left the restaurant, walking away in complete satisfaction. So when do we get to know our classroom? Asked Izuka curiously. According to the website, it should be a couple of days before UA officially starts, claimed Momo. I hope we're all in the same class, said Ichako. Even if we aren't, we should have some Hiroks classes together, mused Izuku. Well, even if we don't get the same classroom, we can still hang out during lunch and after school, offered Itsuka. Plus, we can have even more people to hang out with. Our homework and subjects can't be that different either. We should hang out more before school starts once more, suggested Tenya. That'd be fun, smiled Ichako, though I'll be heading back to my parents' place to live for a bit before coming back here again. Tell your parents that I'd be fine with you living with me, reminded Momo, living alone at my place gets lonely, even if there are servants and maids that live there every now and then. Sure, not at Ichako. The weeks passed by as they would hang out as time would allow. Sometimes Izuku would be with all of them. Other times, he'd be alone with any of the girls and also Tenya. Soon, though, they got their classroom assignments and were about to take their first step into becoming heroes. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want the next part of this video, like subscribe and comment down below, and turn on the bell notification. And also check out other videos that I have created and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.